Thank you. Yeah, so as Martijn mentioned, um, in this webinar, I'm going to talk about uh, how to implement uh, ISO 1518 plug and charge in OSPP 1.6. Um, I'm a technical editor uh, for the Open Charge Alliance, and the technical editors are responsible for uh, writing and maintaining the specifications. This is the agenda for today. First, uh, I'll do a short introduction about uh, OCA and OSPP. Uh, then I'll give a short introduction about the ISO 15118 plug and charge. Um, then I will uh, speak a little bit about the development of plug and charge in OSPP in general. And then we'll do a bit of a deep dive in how to implement uh, plug and charge in OSPP 1.6. And I will go through uh, the use cases that are defined for it. And after that, you can uh, ask uh, questions. So uh, many of you may already know this, but um, the OCA is an industry alliance uh, that governs uh, OSPP. And OSPP is a communication protocol between uh, the charging station and the charging station management system. ISO 1518 defined uh, a way to do plug and charge and plug and charge is an identification and authorization mode where the customer only has to plug in his or her cable uh, into the uh, charging station and um, the, then all billing, authentication and authorization is handled uh, by the car and the charging station without any uh, further user interaction uh, needed and this is facilitated by uh, exchanging uh, certificates and um, the application of digital uh, signatures that are bound to a public key infrastructure like this one this is uh, the pki structure that is um, uh, designed by iso 1518 um, I will not go into too much detail about this because um, you can uh, even organize a separate webinar to explain all this. Uh, I, there even uh, is one, um, but that was not one uh, a webinar from uh, OCA. Um, if you look at the top, you see the root certificates. And if you go down, then you will go through the sub CAs and at the bottom you have the leaf certificates. And I'll explain a bit more about uh, the certificates uh, when I'm going to in the deep dive through the use cases. Um, yeah, so plug and charge uh, support was introduced in OSPP 2.0. Um, what was needed was a good exchange of um, yeah, certificates mainly, but uh, information through. Uh, uh, from the EV to the charging station and then uh, pass on to the CSMS. So uh, there is many information that just needs to be passed on, but you will also need to handle all the uh, yeah, security with a charging station as middleman. Um, there was a growing support to also uh, uh, yeah, and growing demand to also support this for OSPP 1.6. So what we've done is we created an application note that describes how to uh, map uh, the 15118 plug and charge onto uh, OSPP 1.6J using the data transfer mechanism. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll give a uh, an example of such a data transfer message in the next slide. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, the applic application note can be found on our website in, and we, yeah, that includes also some other application note we, we wrote, including also some white papers. Um, like, for example, uh, the security white paper. And why I want to mention the security white paper is that um, 
the application note and the security white paper both uh, talk about security. And um, what we've done for uh, some of the messages that are in the application note, we stripped all the standard OSPP security. So all the information that was needed to uh, set up the security for uh, the communication between the charging station and the charging station management system, because that is handled by this document, so the security white paper. And the application note contains uh, information that will guide you how to implement the combination of these two documents if you want to implement both of them. Um, for the uh, security white paper, we also uh, organized uh, a separate webinar and you can um, view this webinar on our uh, website as well. So there's also a link for that. So yeah, but it is, like I mentioned, it's possible to combine the security white paper and the um, yeah, plug and charge application notes, but it's uh, yeah, not, not the most elegant solution because you have some overlapping features. So at the end, we do recommend to make the transition to OSP 2.0.1 um, because there you have to, yeah, the, the security, the certificate management functionality is uh, merged and it is handled as a whole. So uh, that is the better approach at the end. So how to implement plug and charge in OSPP? Um, I want to start with this configuration key. Um, this configuration key, it can be used to turn the uh, plug and charge functionality on and off in a charging station. Um, but mo more importantly, um, if the CSMS sees that a charger has this configuration key, then it knows that it's that the charger supports plug and charge. So that's very important. Then there are these use cases that are defined in OSPP. We uh, gave them the same uh, ID number in the application note as uh, was described is described in uh, OSPP 2.0.1 uh, specification. So, um, for example, A02 and A03 describe how to install the charge point certificate. And then you have also other use cases below that for the uh, installation or updating the certificates in the car. And then M03, 4 and 5 are for maintaining and handling the uh, certificates installed in the charging station. So retrieving, deleting, and installing root certificates. Then M06 is uh, a way to, uh, yeah, for the car to ask uh, the charging station to uh, give some status update about its V2G uh, certificate. Uh, and intermediate certificates. And the charging station has to request this inform information from the CSMS um, and give it back to the car. And then finally, we have C07, and this is um, yeah, the use case where it all happens. Uh, all the other use cases were preparation, and here the uh, authorization actually takes place. So you will, the, the car will provide the contract certificate and then the communication is being set up. So the first one, I'll get my laser pointer. Um, so this is the sequence diagram and as you see at the first message, you see that uh, that's a data transfer message like I mentioned and um, within that you have the uh, trigger message. So that's, this is the OSPP 2.0 uh, message mapped within the data transfer. Uh, yeah, so first, uh, in this case, the uh, central system triggers the charge point to um, install a new charging station certificate, but the charge, charge point can also do it himself if it recognizes that, for example, its certificate is going to expire. 
So then it can generate a new public private key pair, send a certificate signing request to the central system, which will pass it on to the certificate authority, which will sign the certificate and return it to the central system. And then the central system will pass the certificate on to the charge point, which will validate it and then store it for later use. So uh, that was this is the data transfer example uh, I uh, talked about earlier. So here you have the data transfer message, which contains a message ID, a data blob, and the vendor ID. The message ID uh, must contain the uh, name of the message of the OSP 2.0.1 message, and the data blob contains the the full payload of the message so all fields so for example this is a signed certificate request which contains uh, a csr i did not contain the full csr because then the example would be too long so this is just a template and the type of the certificate this is for so in this case a v2g certificate then uh, we have the vendor id and uh, yeah in a in a normal customization, you would provide here your feature or your company name. But in this case, we standardized uh, the value for the application node. So that everyone uses this same value and is aware that uh, this value uh, will be recognized as um, the 1.6 plugin charge functionality. So you know all messages with this value are part of this feature. Then we have the uh, yeah, certificate installation and update for the uh, EV. Um, from this point on, I will use uh, sequence diagrams from the OSPP 2.0 specification um, because they will give a nice overview of how uh, yeah, the message flow uh, works. So in this case, you see the GET 1598 EV certificate request, but this is of course also wrapped in a data transfer. So, um, yeah, what what is the case? Uh, in the car, there is a OEM provisioning certificate. This is a long lifetime certificate, but it also needs a short lifetime certificate, uh, which is a contract certificate. And uh, that can uh, the sorry the yeah so the OEM provisioning certificate is already install installed in the car by the OEM. So the car manufacturer and the contract certificate is installed using this way via OSPP. So the EV will first send a certificate uh, installation request. This is an 15.11.8 message and then it will uh, pass this on to the CSMS using an OSPP message and there it can specify whether it's an install or an update and it will contain an XE request. This is a data blob that's just being passed on so the charging station does not have to handle uh, this data. That This can be handled by the CSMS. And the CSMS will return an XE response which contains the contract certificate but also the private key of that certificate. Um, but to make that safe, that private key is encrypted with the OEM certificate that's installed inside the car. So the car needs that certificate to be able to decrypt that private key. So that's how, it, yeah, that's how it's made safe. Then we have the uh, yeah, certificate management use cases just to manage the, the certificates in the charging station. So this is the use case for retrieving certificates. Um, in OSPP 2.0.1, these um, use cases are also used for handling the certificates that are part of the standard OSPP security. So the communication between the charging station and the central system. Um, but in this case, these uh, values are stripped for the application node. So for the application nodes, you can only use the V2G root, MO root, and the V2G certificate chain. So you can also request uh, the full chain that's installed in the charger. 
Then you have the delete certificate. How this functionality works is that um, the CSMS will um, identify the certificate using a OCSP uh, certificate hash data, which will contain this information. Uh, so an hash algorithm, issuer name hash, issuer, issuer key hash, and a serial number. And this way, the charging station knows which certificate it needs to delete. And you have the installation of the root certificate. In uh, this case, uh, the, yeah, it's the V2G root that can be installed and the MR root. Uh, the other uh, certificates from the V2G chain are installed with the, uh, yeah, the use case that is used to install a new V2G certificate chain in the charger. So the first use case I mentioned. Then you have the, uh, yeah, the use case that is used to um, yeah, verify the status of the certificate. So um, when the communication starts, the EV will set up a one-way TLS to the charger and provide all its uh, V2G certificates. And it uh, may also request um, the status of the V2G certificate of the charging station and uh, all intermediate certificates. Um, so then the charging station needs to send a get certificate status request to the CSMS, but it can also have already this information already cached so then he can do it beforehand and the EV driver does not have to wait. So here um, you have the uh, plug and charge authorization so this is where it actually happens. Um, it's a bit um, of a large diagram but that's because uh, there are yeah, two options here. Um, but the only difference is in whether the certificate is cached within the CSMS or that it still needs to send an OCSP request to the sub-CA. But uh, let's start over here. First, you have some communication set up, 1511.8 message between the EV and the charging station. Then the EV will send a payment details request to the charging station and the charging station will do an authorize. Uh, which contains the email ID, but also uh, certificate hash, hash data. This is the data that the CSMS, well, the sub-CA needs to be able to uh, validate the contract certificate. Um, but it's also possible for the charging station to pass on the full uh, uh, contract certificate. Um, but therefore, you would have this uh, you would need this con uh, configuration key and then it needs to be set to true. And then the charger knows, okay, I can just provide my full contract certificate to uh, the central system. And this could be helpful in cases the charger uh, is not able to, to verify if the certificate is valid and then the CSMS can uh, handle this. And then finally, we also have a configuration key uh, for yeah, offline contract validation. But um, uh, yeah, I don't think that um, yeah, many business cases will uh, allow this. Um, I expect that most um, um, yeah, implementers will implement it in a way that the uh, CSMS uh, will be uh, the one that needs to uh, verify the certificates in this case. So 